Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris M, and I'd like to invite you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. And I'd like to welcome you to this show about Kundalini and your health. And uh, before we get going with that, I would like to to welcome uh, Santara. Hello, Santara. Hello, Kristen. And uh, I would like to thank you, Santara, for making this show possible. Uh, you and your family in the Kingdom of Kerry in Ireland. And uh, so, thank you very much for allowing this show to exist. You're very welcome, and hello, everybody. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, today uh, is is the is the June 12th, and um, for those of you who who know about our, the Kundalini community on Yahoo groups and Facebook groups, uh, we're in the middle of a of a Shakti Pant period. Actually, we're at the beginning of a Shakti Pant period with the uh, sending of uh, uh, specific frequencies of energy, energies of awareness, and of and of the Kundalini itself. And so, I'd like to welcome uh, many of you who are participating in that uh, to the show today. Um, I would like to uh, say thank you, of course, to Sitar, but also to Eileen Laurel and to Glenn Ola and many of the other people who assist in, in producing different areas of receptivity for this information to be given. Uh, Eileen Laurel and her community development, uh, Glenn Ola in his website, Maintenance and Development, and, uh, and of course, you know, Centara with, with this radio program. So thank you all for, for coordinating and, and participating in the Kundalini Awakening information being given out uh, in this way. Uh, so, with that, I would like to let you know that you can, of course, go to Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at yahoogroups.com. You can also go to Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 on Facebook, Kundalini uh, Awakening Exclamation Point on Facebook, uh, and you can uh, participate in those communities in, in discussing this type of information. Uh, for healing, you can go to the Kundalini Healing on yahoogroups.com or Kundalini Healing on the Facebook uh, groups.com so that you can participate in those areas, either in the giving or the receiving of, of healing in those areas. Uh, there is a YouTube channel, and that is at Chrisum uh, O Kundalini, but that's the Chrisum Zero Kundalini uh, on Facebook. And uh, so you can see there's about 245 videos for you to review uh, at your leisure. I'd like to welcome the people who are here now, guest 2631-2778. Uh, so hello, and guest 2710, I'd like to welcome you as well. Um, thank you for, for listening to this show live. Uh, I would also like to, to acknowledge and thank those who are listening to this show in the future, in the archives. Hello to all of you as well. And I'm going to go ahead and begin. This show is about Kundalini and your health. Basically, the first premise that I want to introduce you to are the five bodies of human expression. Uh, this would be the physical body, the emotional body, the mental body, the psychological body, and the spiritual body. Kundalini Awakening or activation will begin to affect all of these bodies, uh, either in, in, a, in a single fashion or a multiple combination event fashion. Uh, multiple combination, I mean, you know, the, the physical body and the emotional body may begin to respond at the same time. Oh, just so you know, because I think this phone will pick it up, uh, we have somewhat of an animal rescue center here uh, at, at the ashram, and so you're going to hear birds and maybe some dogs and things like that, so don't let that throw you. Also, a, a, a phone may ring here, and I apologize, but that does happen sometimes. It won't get answered, but but it, it will. you will hear the sound. Um, 
much of the time the Kundalini will will take the combination approach. Uh, your emotional body will typically begin to to manifest itself upon the physical body, which will manifest itself upon the mental body, which will manifest itself on the psychological body. The spiritual body, uh, being of a higher frequency, a higher expression, will often observe and become the effect after the, the other four bodies have been have been have gone through the changes. The spiritual body pretty much knows what's going on. Okay, the other bodies really don't know what's going on unless they're they're tuning into to this radio uh program or you know they've read it in other books or you know other sources of information i am certainly not the only source of information but i have to say that i am one of the very few sources of this kind of information i don't bring in uh religious belief systems so much because i know the kundalini the, the Kundalini is beyond a religious belief system. It uh, all all religious belief systems end at Kundalini. I mean, all roads lead to Kundalini, so to speak. All religious paths lead to Kundalini, and so for me to adopt one or another uh, would not be appropriate within the context of Kundalini. So, so. You, you'll get a lot of information, uh, you know, from the Sanskriti and from the uh, shamanic and, you know, from the mystical Christian, mystical Buddhism, mystical Islam, which would be of a Sufi, Sufi origin. Uh, you'll get a lot from the ancient Chinese, the the Taoists, and the and, and, the, and the, the many different belief systems in the, in the Chinese uh, paradigm. And so, I just want you to know that. Kundalini surpasses these things. It is the end point where many of these belief systems will end, if not all. So, for me, it's just the Kundalini that that matters in these discussions. The Kundalini, its reception and its balance within your body as you go through uh, the many highs and, and and the many lows and the many permutations of experience that the Kundalini can bring. The first body I would like to deal with will be the physical body. The physical body uh, requires balance. The physical body is a level of balance that is that is constant. Uh, we have very, very fine levels of balance, and we have very, very uh, uh, flexible levels of balance. Uh, uh, a flexible level of balance within the physical body would be the blood pressure or the pulse rate of the heart. Uh, you know, these things can vary widely. Uh, a, a very fine level of balance would be would be the uh, oh the alkaline acid balance in the body. Okay, and that would be a finer level of balance. Um, and, and so, and, you know, and say the balance of the muscles in the eye, so that the eye can see. The way that it needs to be needs to see, uh, without say one eyeball deviating from another. So the muscles there need you know, they're a very fine balance. Um, the Krebs cycle is another fine balance, and so you know there are many 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 different levels of balance within the physical body. The Kundalini will affect typically the endocrine system first. This will have to do with all of the glands and all of the hormones that come through. Uh, it will have a tactile effect on the physical body. It will feel as if uh, goosebumps or, or uh, each hair follicle is coming alive as a, as a serpent, or you know, it'll feel like electric insects are crawling all over you. It's not in a bad way. It, it actually is typically quite quite pleasurable, unless your fear of this new symptom is is scaring you to the point where you can't have the enjoyment. You know, fear can displace enjoyment. So so as you feel these physical symptoms coming along, uh, you can expect certain physical uh, health-related scenarios to develop. Your blood pressure can go through the roof or it can go through the floor. Uh, you know, you'll go, you're, you'll go to the MDs and 
your heart rate may be going, you know, really, really, really fast, and they'll measure this, and they'll look at you for a cardiac cardiac issue or, you know, a hypotension or hypertension issue. Uh, and so, you know, these these types of physical anomalies will come to a person within the physical within the physical aspect of the Kundalini awakening scenario. So be aware of this. And don't freak out over this. Don't have a fear or a panic attack over this. It's easy to do. It's easy to do, but just a little bit of knowledge goes a long ways in the early aspect of the Kundalini effect upon the physical body. Uh, the physical body may feel temperature changes, hot, cold. You may feel a breeze on your face that is coming from absolutely nowhere. Uh, you may begin to feel muscle groups stiffening and, and strengthening in ways that that are not uh, uh, easy for you to find causation for. Okay, you, you may, you know, you may have the kriyas. The kriyas, you know, are 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 forced body positions. given by the kundalini uh, to help its infusion upon the physical system. Uh, you'll, you'll, you may have many, many different things. You know, you know, even even a vision, a, a waking vision, uh, will have an effect on the physical system uh, because the physical system uh, can can experience fear. Fear is, you know, has a definite effect on the physical system. And even though fear is also an emotional quality and and, uh, and somewhat of a mental quality, definitely a psychological pro- uh, quality, uh, it will have definitive effect on the physical systems. And so, of course, you know, I counsel you to to eat your watermelon and to stay hydrated and to realize that that the Kundalini is expanding your adrenal systems, you know, and pushing adrenaline into your into your bloodstream, which is the fight or flee response, and yet you have nothing to fight or flee, and so your ego mind will begin to create scenarios where you can fight or flee, scenarios that don't truly exist in reality and are basically, typically fear-based. So, so know this and understand this and realize this, that you that, that the Kundalini is affecting you in a very, very tactile, real physical way on the physical system. It is not, uh, this is not imaginary fairyland. This is not something that you have to have faith in. This is a real, absolutely real, tactile physical experience that occurs on the physical body. You know, in, in many ways, the physical body can get thumped with this. And you know it's it's a it's a thumping that is tactile uh, because it has to be it has to be tactile it's a real thing in many cases you know we're so used to the new age and, and uh, you know some of these uh, qualities of belief system where oh have faith my child and, and this might come to you and of course you have faith and it never comes okay never comes you're always Having that faith, but never it's never coming true for you. Well, this isn't the way with Kundalini. Kundalini, you don't have to have faith. It has it doesn't really care whether you have faith. It's there. It's there, it's real, and it's happening to you, and you will feel it. It is typically it is not subtle. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's subtle, but typically, certainly at the beginning, it is not a subtle experience. And as as the physical body begins to manifest its symptoms, so will the emotional body. I'm going to move to the emotional body now. So will the emotional body also begin to manifest its symptoms. Okay, the emotional body will will often just go straight into fear, straight into fear with this. And it's very important that you realize what is occurring so that you can begin to, to modulate and, and give the emotional body a level of balance that it requires to have and to hold this in a very positive way. You don't necessarily need to have fear. Now, 
if you have the Kundalini awakening uh, in a, in a in the context of no information and no no information at all, no assistance, no understanding of what's going on. Well, that that is a recipe where you do need to have fear. You do need to understand what fear is, and then of course you by by having that fear you get to to have the experience of overcoming that fear which which allows you to to develop a certain level of strength within the emotional body that allows you to overcome that fear and so in many ways you know within the fear context you'll you know you'll see a lot of different things a lot of different spiritual creation entities you know i call them entities these are these are uh spiritual creation that are outside the typical five sense levels of awareness or understanding. Okay. And so these fear creations are well, these 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 creations, uh, they also have their place in the and their design within the the greater matrix of uh matrix of, of create creation. But for you they're being used as a quality of fear development so that you can initiate a quality of fear overcoming. And therefore, you can have that strength, and therefore, as the kundalini continues its its, uh, its maturation within you, you can have, you can have that level of, of acceptance of new and different things occurring uh, in front of you and around you and with you. Uh, the emotional body is very, very susceptible to to uh, to the different feelings and manifestations of Kundalini that the uh, that the physical body will have, and I'm just going to interrupt myself here for a second and let you have the call in number. Call in number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. And uh, do I have callers, uh, Santara? Hello? Centara, hello. Oh, hello. Can you so, hear me? Yes. Uh, I'm going to assume that the people on my on my call list there are, are just listening, right? Yes, just writing that down for you now. Thank you. Okay, so as as we have the emotional uh, symptoms occurring, they're often occurring in in in, in at the same time as the physical effects that are that are occurring. And so as you have the physical effect, you'll also have the responding emotional effect. And, you know, the, the, this is a very basic concept. You know that uh, if your body is feeling something strange, well, then all of a sudden your emotional body goes into fear. It's very fast. It's very instantaneous. It's very, it's very connected. And... As we have the emotional body, say, gearing uh, towards receiving a level of information, information about what is happening to the physical body, well, that fear can be uh, dissolved. Oh, it's the Kundalini have, giving me a Kriya. Well, okay, I know about those Kriyas. You know, I've had these Kriyas. Okay, fine, fine. The, the Kriyas are good. Good. I'll, I will surrender to the Kriya, and uh, and I will I won't give this any more any more fear. And therefore, the, the fear is eliminated from the emotional body. And the physical manifestation is allowed to continue without the blockage of fear interfering with it. So this is, so you've just been given a description of what can happen uh, with regards to the, the emotional body uh, responding to a physical demonstration of the kundalini upon the physical body and the emotional body responding to that in a positive way. Say, oh, this is this is the kundalini. Now, you may also have uh, emotional response with regards to uh, its, its own manifestation of kundalini, extreme levels of emotion, extreme levels of love, love that you have never felt before, love that, that, that pushes the emotional body to the limit of of, of, of crying, uh, lots of tears. These tears are really, really healthy. Remember, they're, they're emotional relief valve so that the, the, uh, the emotional body can change 
you know, within the Kundalini context, it can change and mature within its own Kundalini uh, uh, transformation. You know, the five bodies have their own level and schedule of transformation within the Kundalini. By schedule, I'm, I, what I mean is there's a certain amount of time that, that the Kundalini will be in all five bodies of the human being, but only there's a certain combination of events that will take place that correspond with a person's karma and a person's level of, of uh, surrender within the Kundalini awakening context. Uh, and so the agenda that the Kundalini have will have with a person is going to be unique to that person. So we'll just say that the physical body is expressing uh, a a symptom, and it'll be a while, say, before the the emotional body is going to process that symptom. Okay, so right now I've just been discussing the physical and the emotional bodies of expression. It's just a very small scratching of the surface. I have to tell you that health and kundalini is an extremely large subject. And uh, I probably will just, you know, I'm just going to give it to you as much as I can give within this hour and a half. Uh, I'm going to move back to the physical symptoms now. Now, the physical symptoms many times can, can mimic the expression of an illness. Uh, you know, if you, if, for instance, if you go into the, into the hospital environment, well, you're going to fall outside of the parameters of health that uh, typical AMA-oriented um, uh, measurements will, will indicate. And so, of course, as you go into the hospital environment or the medical setting, whether it's a clinic or your, your own doctor's office or a hospital setting, uh, you're going to fall far outside of, of the typical measurements that they that they have an expectation of you having. And so as, as they recognize this, they're going to start prescribing drugs to you. They're going to start prescribing drugs. They're going to start prescribing, oh, maybe we need to surgically remove your left big toe because it's black and it looks like it's going gangrenous. And so, yeah, we're just going to have to cut that off. Uh, and you may laugh, but, you know, that kind of what they're looking at here you know they don't know any better they don't understand the kundalini and so within a kundalini context i'll suggest you stay far away uh from any surgeons wanting to cut off your left big toe uh realize that that you know a black left big toe is just another symptom of kundalini okay has nothing to do with any kind of a medical diagnosis or anything like that has nothing to do with gangrene there's nothing wrong with your left big toe. But, you know, if you take that to a doctor, they're going to tell, oh, my gosh, you've got a severe problem with your left big toe. It looks like it's going to fall off next week. Let's cut it off. You know, so within that context, I'm going to suggest you maybe not do that. Okay. Left big toes are very handy to have. They're hard to come by. Kundalini expresses through the left big toe as black. Black and dark blue under the toenail and sometimes the entire toe. So, so what I'm saying here is um, in, until science catches up to the understanding of Kundalini symptoms, you may not want to depend on science-based medical uh, um, conclusions with regards to symptoms of a Kundalini awakening. Okay, very very important that you understand that context because in the Western world. Well, we're programmed to go to the MD for anything that is uh, a strange anomaly upon the body or something that we're not used to having. And and what I'm suggesting here strongly is that the medical community has no clue about Kundalini. They do not know or understand or even want to know or understand about the Kundalini awakening upon a person. What they want, you know, is in their reference books. And if they, you know, if, if you know, Fifty years ago, somebody said, "Oh, well, there's something called kundalini, and it, you know, it'll give an exaggerated heart rate. It'll give an, you know, out, you know, uh, a BP that is higher than normal. You know, unless they have that in their reference material, then they don't really trust it. They don't really want to know about it because, you know, they get 15 minutes with you, and that's all they want to have with you. They want to find the problem. And uh, you know, if the left big toe is indicating is like it might be something seriously wrong, we'll go, you know." 
they'll try to take the measures that they've been trained in medical school to to look at. Uh, and this goes across the board uh, with with uh, any of the of the physical uh, expressions that the Kundalini will bring upon the physical body. On a, you know, on a positive level, your immune system can be vastly improved. Vastly improved. Uh, you know, for years I would work at hospitals and I'd go into different hospital rooms and and uh, I knew that that uh, even though I was surrounded with all this disease and you know basically here's one thing you need to know about hospitals they never clean the ceiling so all of the microbes and all the bacteria and all the mold and all the mold spores and all of these things <coughs> even in the surgery bays even in the OR rooms, even in the, the highly infectious, you know, rooms, they never clean the ceiling. <laughs> Ceilings don't exist for them, I guess. So so the scenario is, is you get all of this collection, you know, in the ceiling of the hospital or the clinic or the doctor's office that never gets cleaned. It stays there fermenting or doing whatever it needs to be, the 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 MRSA, you know, the MRSA vector. Oh, well, how does that get in the hospitals? And oh my gosh, what do we? How should we? Control? You know, it's there on the ceiling. Anyway, so the the, the Kundalini can greatly expand your immune response uh, to the degree that that you won't get sick, or to the degree that you can feel you can feel your your Kundalini going after a certain microbe, not necessarily killing it but changing it so that it's not harmful to you. Once again, you know, we Kundalini brings the, uh, 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 an idea of ahimsa, A-H-I-M-S-A, ahimsa, Sanskrit word for doing no harm. Do no harm. Well, it does no harm either, but it will change things so that it's not harmful to you. Okay. Uh, now, some things it wants you to have. So for some illnesses, it will want you to have illnesses. It will want you to have that flu. It will want you to have that, you know, for me, you know, I, you know, it tells me to, to leave a, a high-dust environment. And, and yet, you know, you know for, for various reasons, I don't leave the high-dust environment. So it allows me to have, you know, lung issues that are, that, that are attributable, attributable to a high-dust environment. And so it will allow that to occur. It's a smart energy. It's a conscious energy. It knows you. It knows what your you know what your what your choices are, and it tries to give you better choices. Okay. So so within the understanding of, of the physical system, the, the 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 flesh body, the Kundalini will change you. You know, many, many people end up in the emergency room thinking they're having a heart attack, thinking, you know, they're having this ailment or that ailment, wondering why they're all of a sudden having spastic body movements that they don't know about, why they're, you know, all of a sudden seeing visions or hearing things that nobody else is hearing. Oh, my gosh, I must have a disease. Therefore, let me go to the ER. And, you know, there they're going to give you a, you know, strong tranquilizer, Depakote or some other type of tranquilizer. And, uh, and, 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 and you know, try to, to relieve the issue or the symptom through, through chemistry, typically. And chemistry is the big deal because the pharmaceutical industry has such a hold over the medical industry. And so, and so I want to give you the understanding that with Kundalini, you do not need to go to the ER. But I'm going to say, hey, if you feel you need to go to the ER, then you go to that ER. Go. Go and get all the tests done and get all, you know, the urinary test, the blood test, all the different tests. Maybe get an MRI. You know, maybe a CAT scan. You know, get whatever your MD feels that you need to have. And then when you come home and, and, and you know, there comes the symptom once again, you know, it, just accept that the Kundalini is transforming you for a while, and it's going to continue to do so. The more you resist it, the more you fear it, the the less, uh, the, the more painful and the more uncomfortable it's going to be. 
So really do your best to surrender to the Kundalini. Realize that it has your best interests at heart. It's changing you for the better, not for the worse. It's changing you away from how you used to be, though. And it, that can be a scary thing all by itself. Uh, having that kind of a transformation occur for a person can really frighten a person severely. And so this is why I'm putting this information out, out here. You don't need to go into fear, but you will. Okay. You eat the watermelon, you stay hydrated, you look at your electrolyte balance within your body, you know, even take Gatorade if you have to, you know, if there's no other option. And I know there, you know, the, the, the electrolytic stabilizers within fluids and, and, and foods are not as common as we would like with regards to Kundalini. Watermelon happens to have a really great combination of nutrients that can begin to work uh, in harmony with the adrenals and the kidneys, allowing a person to back off of fear much quicker. So does coconut water, coconut milk, however you want to phrase that. Uh, try to get everything organic. You don't, you don't try, you don't, you don't want to use toxins as a way of, of affecting a healing. And toxins, you know, unless it's organic, even organics, you know, have a level of toxicity since since the federal government took it over. But it's nowhere near as bad as as the the agricultural foods that are that are grown in this country and other countries that have high degree of pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, and insecticides uh, in it. So you don't need to eat something that is now designed or, or conditioned to kill. There's no ahimsa there. Okay, it's all about killing. So eat foods that are as organic as you can get it. Now I know it's not it's not easy to find everywhere. Uh you 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 know in the country that you're in and the society that you're in, you know, it's hard sometimes and more expensive to find organic food, but I'm going to suggest it for you regardless. Stay as far away from commercial agriculture as you can get. And that includes with your water. Do not let municipal water systems uh, add fluoride to your water, add chlorine to your water, add all of these terrible, terrible chemicals, hurtful to your body chemicals. And I don't care what part per million they are. You know, get as pure and clean of water as you can. If you have to go to those purification filter machines, well, then do that. Okay? This all has an effect on the physical body. And the comfort of the physical body will have a direct effect on the comfort of the emotional body, which will have a direct effect on the comfort of the mental body. All three of these bodies will have direct effects on the comfort of the psychological body. The spiritual body knows what's occurring. It knows. It knows. It knows that you took this body in order to have kundalini. So this is what is going on, and it's following on. It looks at, at the choices you're making. Uh, choices You can either make choices that further a spiritual evolution or not. And one is not better than the other. One is just another choice. So as we continue into the, you know, we, we, we're looking at the the physical body and it's, you know, and the kundalini effect upon it. Uh, the kundalini will choose your food. It will choose whether or not you have sex. It will choose uh, whether or not your your body goes into devotion towards your, if you have a belief system, say Jesus or Allah or Buddha or whoever, Krishna. Uh, it will choose how your physical system um, is stand by a second. Might have somebody at the door here. I don't want to get interrupted. Good, good. It will choose how your body goes into its worshiping. How how that body worships, or whether or not that body worships. Okay, Kundalini will take control over the body to a very large degree. Uh, as much as you can, surrender to this. Allow it to occur. 
allow it to occur. And in many ways, it will cross the cultural barriers that that we've been raised with. You know, we've, we've been raised with, okay, a certain type of, of spiritual practice is right and a certain type of spiritual practice is wrong. Never do that. Never never do this, this, or that with a with a with a spiritual practice or a spiritual teacher or a spiritual book or a, or, a, or, a, or a level of understanding. And the Kundalini will just step right over that and send you into these into these zones of of, uh, of taboo and say, okay, practice this practice for for the next six weeks. And yes, I know it's extremely taboo, but do it anyway. Do it anyway. Kundalini doesn't have the fear issues that our society produces within many of its population. And so on a physical level, whether or not you're able to go into meditation, whether or not you're allowed to go into prayer, and what kind of, of, of devotion or prayer and meditation occurs will be controlled by the kundalini. Typically, typically, if the kundalini doesn't want you to meditate, you'll never get there. And if you try to force the issue, uh, sometimes people have felt like a hot knife going into the top of their head. And the reason being is that Meditation, even though it's not an activity-prone uh, uh, expression, it is a. It will bring more energy into the system, and the Kundalini will finally say enough. And this body has enough energy; you will not be allowed to meditate, because that brings in more energy. You know, everybody, in, you know, from a five sense understanding says, "Oh, well, meditation is so relaxing. Oh my gosh." It's, how could that bring energy in? Oh my gosh, that's so wrong. You know, I like to do yoga because it relaxes me. You know, we don't understand that it has an energetic generative component, just like meditation, just like prayer. And so the Kundalini will hijack those systems and say, no more meditation, no more prayer, no more yoga, no more five Tibetans, no more, uh, uh, you know, any of the spiritual practices like, say, Qigong or Tachi or, you know, uh, no more of this or that. No more whirling around like a dervish. Okay. You don't get to do that anymore. God says you have to stop. And when God speaks through the Kundalini to you, well, that is what you will do. And if you resist, it can often cause physical and emotional pain. I want that to be clear with you. Uh, you may think that you're in control of your life and that you're, that you're pursuing a life that is based upon your choices and your decisions and your influence and, and your control. And when you have Kundalini, all of that control goes away. Or as much as it wants to have that control go away. Because it will even decide how much control you get to feel that you have so that you can make choices, you still it still wants you to make choices, but it's teaching you what the right choices are to take with regards to uh, the kundalini infusion within you, the transformation within you. And this has a direct effect on how you perceive your self-image. And your self-image has a direct effect of how you perceive your wellness, your personal wellness to be, which is a reflection on how your physical health and emotional health and mental health are balanced within you. Kundalini takes control of all of these. All of these. Now, your ego, your psychological body, is going to want to reassert its control all the time. The ego will will feel the energy and, and it will, gosh, God, you know, I feel so powerful, I feel so strong, I just Gosh, you know, anybody stands in my way, I do, I'm just going to obliterate them. I'm just going to beat them up. I'm just going to kill them. I'm just going to do all of these, you know, terrible things. Uh, and and the Kundalini is just looking at that, just looking at like we would look at a at a you know a two year old, going, okay, all right, all right, I'll let him have this for a little while, and let him dance around with that for for as long as it takes to get a certain level of infusion with him so that he's comfortable with the infusion. And, uh, you know, he can express all his ego right now and get that out of the way. 
And then it'll step in and it'll begin to modulate that person towards, say, a more refined uh, aspect. But not to say that the, the, the that the, the initial expression is wrong. We're not drawing a judgment here. We're, we're just outlining an evolution. We're outlining an evolution. Uh, strength is a requirement. Strength and the enthusiasm of strength, the ego enthusiasm of strength is, is also a requirement of the infusion. There's the pattern of infusion upon the person uh, is unique to the person's karma, but it's also unique to that uh, special expression that the Kundalini is taking within that person's karma and combination of events that it's bringing into the person's physical expressions. Gosh, I hope uh, that's probably as clear as mud. Let me see if I can phrase it uh, easier. Kundalini will determine what the ego gets to express or not express, and none of it is bad, even though in our cultural context some of it may seem bad. Okay. We are natural human beings having Kundalini. I mean, there are ET out there that, you know, they'll, they'll harvest as many eggs from a woman as they can get, and they're, they're all trying to get the Kundalini, but they're just not able to have it because they're not able to, to, to open the control of their bodies to the divine. And so, you know, we're a very special, special, special creation. We can go from zero to divinity in a lifetime. That's not easy. It's not easy. And, uh, you know, these ETs that try to do all of this stuff, you know, they're barking up the wrong tree. You know, they need to go inside and change themselves before they go inside and and try to change themselves from the outside to the inside. It needs to go from the inside to the outside. And it's the same with us as we go through our kundalini transformation and expect on our health. We need to go inside our, our ourselves and go, okay, okay, uh, my symptoms kind of match up to a kundalini awakening event. Wow, okay. All right, so where does this lead me? And then you allow the kundalini to lead you to the levels of information that you need in order to make the right choices for yourself. It's teaching you how to make the right choices. So if it's led you here to this radio program, pay attention to these concepts. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. It's, it, this is really a joyful, beautiful, wonderful thing. At first, it can be, you know, disconcerting. It can be fear-inducing fear because it's so strange and so different than what you're used to and what your society expects uh, for you to have. Um, you will have heat, but you won't have a high temperature. You will have heat, and you will have a high temperature. You will have coldness all through your body, absolute freezing-like coldness, but you won't have a lower body temperature, or you will have coldness, and you will have a low temperature, lower temperature. Okay, you will feel these different experiences upon the body these roving temperature experiences, and it's fine. It's fine. It's normal. You'll be able, you know, when you have the kundalini heat, you'll be able to go into a, a freezing water and not really be affected by it. Yeah. So, Tara, are you there? Yes, I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> That's tell so about, true. Tell me about your Shasta, <laughs> tell, tell about your Mount Shasta experience. Well, um, in Mount Shasta, we, we, a group of us from Kundalini Awakening Systems went together to Mount Shasta, and it was during the winter. And the top of the the pond that we were about to swim in was covered with ice. I mean, this was thick with ice. And um, we cracked the ice, and I was able to just go into the water and remain there for quite some time and not be in any way cold. Uh, because kundalini, I mean, okay, when you go in, you feel the cold, you're aware, I was aware that it was cold, but I was not cold because my body was just kept so warm by the kundalini, it's quite an amazing experience, and that has happened in other places too, but that was the most extreme environment that I was in, and um, yeah, so kundalini sure does um, that to the physical body. It it's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Santara, for sharing that because it's so I true. I 
Go I'm ahead. trying Go to ahead. ask you a question about pain, if I may. There, there was two things that came up to me while you were talking. One is about pain and, um, you know, how pain manifests in the body. And is it always about not being in balance? Is it a communication from the Kundalini to us? Could you say something about pain? And the other thing was well, about tiredness, extreme fatigue. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, that's okay. good. I'm glad you met extreme fatigue. Well, let's go with the pain first. Pain is a form of communication. That's all it is. It's a form of communication from the body to the consciousness or in, in, in our context from the kundalini to the consciousness. Uh, pain is necessary to tell you that, that one, uh, transformations are occurring. An event is occurring on your body that is if it's from the kundalini, then, you know, you're, the pain in your body is from the different, say if you're having a lot of kriyas, well, you're going to have pain from some of those kriyas because your body's not used to being forked and twisted that way. Not all the time. Sometimes the, the kundalini will uh, will erase the pain from your from your sensation, but at other times it'll keep it just so that you can know that there is a cause and effect based upon what is occurring with you that places you within a five-sense understanding of, of, oh, okay, A plus B equals C, and so that's a comforting thought for a person, and so the, the pain serves as a way of keeping a person sane uh, within this transformation and because it's a, it's, it's a familiar equation. Uh, pain with the Kundalini, uh, you know, associated with, with um... well, give me a context, uh, Centaur. What kind of pain are you talking about? Oh, gee. Well, I suppose there's different kinds. I was talking maybe about shooting, stabbing pains, migraines, pains in the muscles, <laughs> you know, okay. pains right. that right. you can get. Okay. Oh. All right. So, yeah, so the so the a person that would have migraines or, or shooting pains, this is the transformation of the nervous system. This is the nervous system being wired from, say, a 12-volt system to a 12,000-volt system. Sometimes there's going to be pain associated with that. And it's the same with the migraine uh, uh, scenario. With migraines, you know, once again, the system is being upgraded. The chakras are, are receiving much more energy. The expression of the energy is coming from a within to without uh, equation. And this intense buildup of energy... Uh, can have uh, a painful effect on the body. It's typically transient, though. It doesn't stay. It, it, you, you'll feel it for a certain amount of time, then it goes away. Uh, typically, you won't be able to take a, a medication or aspirin or something like that. It won't typically be able to help you. But uh, uh, it, it is there. Um, is, is this another caller? Do I have a caller on here, Centara? Oh, I see you're talking with them. Okay. So so the, the pain is typically transient. It will it will come and then it will go. Sometimes it will come back again, but it never becomes a chronic pain unless of course you do something to try to make the pain force the kundalini pain to go away and then it may stay longer. Uh with regards to to uh um, being tired all the time or having that uh, fatigue. Now, there's 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 more to to go with this one because this 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 has a little more complexity to it. As I mentioned in the beginning, the Kundalini will affect the the uh, endocrine system first. Well, it'll affect all the organs of the endocrine system as well, the ductless glands and all the different organs of the of the energetic system will be affected. Uh, this includes the thyroid. Now, thyroid definitely will will have a strong effect on whether or not you feel active, or if you feel overly lethargic, or if you you know it puts you into a depression or things of that nature. So, I will suggest that you get a blood test and look at your thyroid uh, stimulating hormone, that the TSH. So I will go, I will suggest that you go and look at your TSH and then look at the T3 and the T4, which is another thyroid uh, uh, expression that comes through. So look at the TSH, the T3, and the T4 
uh, in that in that blood panel for you for your blood test and see what those levels are. Uh, if you are if you have ridges on your fingernails, if if you have uh, dry patches on the outer edges of your eyebrows, if you have if you're losing hair, if you're uh, you know if you're having symptoms of low thyroid, then you know I'm going to suggest you look you. You don't necessarily need to jump onto a thyroid medication like they just love to do. They love to, you know, addict as many people as they can to thyroid medications. And it's not because they're bad. It's just because they're ignorant. Um, I'm not a medical doctor, so I'm not going to give any medical advice here at this at all. But uh, for my for my cat, Lasha, if she is having low thyroid, and, of course, you know, blood test, all that, then, uh, then I have a certain. Uh, let me see if I can find it. My bookmarks here. Um, recently bookmarked. Here we are. Yeah, there's a there's a form of oral iodine that can be taken. One is called Magnescent. M a g n a s c e n t dot com. Um, if you can't get that, then there is something else called. Uh, atomidine, A-T-O-M-I-D-I-N-E. I don't like atomidine so much, even though I've taken it. It's because it has it's mixed with uh, with uh, 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 chlorine, you know, and chlorine is definitely a, a toxin on the body. But the magnescent isn't uh, with that, and that's at uh, www.magnescent.com. There's these. There are, there are these different uh, uh, types of oral iodine that can be taken. One drop typically should be enough. Like, say, if you take the atomidine, one drop is worth to like six, 600 mcgs of iodine. And, and, and so if, if you're having, a, a, you know, thyroid issues uh, that have, affect your ability to motivate yourself, if you're not smoking a lot of pot or you're addicted to alcohol or something like that, you might look at, at uh, some oral iodine substitutions for your cat. <laughs> but for the kitty cats, of course. You know, and Lasha, Lasha, fortunately, she's running around here and she's having a great time. And so we, we take good care of her. Um, let's see, Eileen with a question about her own specific pain. Go ahead, Eileen, come on board. Can you hear, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello. Okay. Well, yes. I don't so much have a question, but I wanted to mention the the pain that I had this this past week. It was rather interesting. It was in one of my kidneys, and I wasn't sure what it was, if it was an infection or a kidney stone or whatever. And then when I did talk to you, you mentioned that I wasn't moving enough, so I started moving more, and I also was surrendering and praying uh, to Shakti, and it went away <laughs> within a very short period of time. And I was amazed myself because I really, I don't feel I went into fear. I was just more curious. And initially oh. I figured oh. it was. Oh, please. Uh, please, please, I mean, You were absolutely in fear. Let's oh. be clear about that. <laughs> no, I was not. And it's okay. It's, um, it's okay. The natural response. Well, the natural response. You know, we're, we're, you know, and we always, we always jump to the to the worst possible scenario. Oh my God, should I have my kidney removed? <laughs> oh my gosh, is it? It must be a kidney stone. Well, yeah, what I, what, the reason I, the reason I wanted to bring this up is that I have had pains and things before, but this was rather intense, and now. It, it's just to me, for me, it's more interesting because I did think in terms of, well, this could be kundalini, and it turns out it was. And so it, it's, to me, it validates um, what you're saying, that kundalini will um, give you pain if you're not following what you're supposed to be doing. Um, well, well, she actually, actually, I think you bring up a really good point, and I, and I, and I'm going to go into it right now. So, so thank you for that. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Excellent question. Excellent question. Excellent question. Here's the thing: is uh, 
oftentimes, as we go through the transformation, uh, we kind of we get a little confused about how we're feeling and, and you know what to do and what not to do and what is a, we're not used to listening to an intuitive communication, and so we fall back on our own ego, uh, you know, our, our known communication vector, and. Oh my God! I only have five minutes left. Oh, jeez. Okay. I, it's I called know a spec- have, Yeah, sorry. This is amazing. This has gone so far. Okay. So anyway, um, it's it's a stagnant energy response, and that means that you're just laying around with the Kundalini, and that will have the effect on the physical body of of bringing you pain in your joints, bringing you pain in your muscles, bringing you pain in general, and and you're, but to also you're going to be going. Oh gosh, you know, I, I don't really feel like getting up and moving around. But you're going to need to get up and move around. You're going to need to interact with the environment. Go move around outside is better. Uh, barefoot. Uh, do your Tibetans. Do your yoga. Do your meditation. Meditation outside. Uh, do these things, uh, and this can really begin to alleviate a stagnant energy response. Volunteer somewhere. Go to the food bank. Go to a. Go to a place where you can help other people, but move around. Get off the couch. Get out of the bed. I know that your ego will want to to keep you there because it's safe, it's comfortable, all of these things, but you need to avoid a stagnant energy response, and often it will will hit you in the kidneys, like Eileen mentioned. You know, you'll feel this sharp, stabbing pain somewhere in your abdomen, and uh, it is an indication often within a kundalini context of a stagnant energy response. And so really, really, really look out for that. Don't hang out in front of the TV. Don't hang out. Don't go into meditation every time you want to, you know, you want to interact with the, the Kundalini. Get outside. Get moving. Do the work. Walk around. Be with people. Here's the thing. In the West, you know, we don't necessarily have the opportunity to just, you know, strip our clothes off and go out into the jungle. Here's that phone. We don't have that opportunity. We, Our jungle is our society. And so we keep our clothes on and we go out there and, and we, we learn how to interact with our society whilst having a kundalini event. Now, what I think I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go kundalini in health part two because this was nowhere near enough time for me to really cover this the way I want to cover it. And let me tell you, I have I only touched on the emotional body. I hardly touched on the psychological or, or the mental bodies, and so I really need to we gotta go in there. We gotta go in there. This this one has been mostly about the physical body and slightly about the emotional body. And so uh, n- uh next week, next Wednesday, uh, we're gonna go into this again. And I'm gonna do this Kundalini and health for as much as it takes because this is a huge, huge subject. It's very important that people begin to understand how Kundalini manifests the help of a person inside of the Kundalini awakening and activation events. Um, so yeah, do your best. As, you know, with, with Eileen's question, it was more about a stagnation event. She's got a bad knee, and so and so as the Kundalini is healing her knee, she's not really able to move around as much as she would like to. You know, she's usually driving around, moving around, walking around, interacting with people, doing all these different things. Well, she's got a lot of downtime right now. And uh, and maybe she's getting a little too active into that downtime. And so as she begins to move around, boom, the, uh, the, the, the pain goes away. And so it's a real big communication. Uh, I want to thank everybody. The, the, the voice just came on and said I have 90 seconds. So I want to thank everybody who tuned in. Prashji, good to see you. Eileen, all the different guests, 2927. Uh, uh, I really would like to thank Amelia and, 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 and Rosemary and, and everybody who, has, who is listening to this now and in the archives. And next week it's going to be Kundalini and Hell 2. Okay. Uh, thanks for listening, and and uh, happy Kundalini to you all. <laughs>